And we are back. I'm Jake Fox. This is Black Tower Radio. We are broadcasting live on 1040 AM, 92.1 FM, WYSL in Rochester, New York. Also on worldnewsradio.today. That's worldnewsradio.today. And we are joined here by Kit O'Connell, Gonzo Journalist. Go to kitoconnell.com. For all of Kit's, for all of Kit's work, he's doing great work out there, writing on subjects that, frankly, you don't find anywhere in the mainstream media, and subjects that are near and dear to my heart. So you know, that's obviously why we have we have uh, we have <laughs> Kit on every month, and uh, we're thankful he agrees to come on every I'm month to highlight these issues. Yeah. I'm really glad to be here. It's always fun. I always enjoy talking with you, Jake. Thanks, Kit. Likewise. Um, so, we're going to lead off with with this article, which is which has a really interesting title. We will never have a legit democracy until we change these three things. What are these three things, Kit? Yeah, sure. And also, you know, before I dive in, I'll give a shout out to to Lee Camp, who published this story on his website. Uh, People should definitely check out his TV show and his comedy tour if they're into the kind of things that we talk about on Black Tower Radio. I'm sure that you'd find a lot out of his work. Um, The three main things are uh, gerrymandering, uh, voter ID laws, and this thing called cross-check. So, uh, gerrymandering, of course, is when the districts, uh, voting districts, both congressional, like, you know, congressional voting districts as well as local voting districts for state offices are redrawn in such a way that they, they tend to sort of clump up voters in one district and then kind of give power If you look at voting districts in most states now, they're not square. Some of them are this long, wiggling pathway. Uh, To give a great example, uh, they wanted to sort of contain all the liberal student voting uh, in one voting area in Texas. So basically there's one voting area that includes Austin and then has this long, miles and miles long tunnel down to uh, San Marcos to catch another university down there. That way they limit the voting power of students to just one area. So so gerrymandering is redrawing voting districts, uh, and it's usually, it tends to fall along, frankly, racist lines. In addition to doing things like limiting where students can vote, they also tend to sort of try to minimize the votes of minorities, of of non-white people particularly, because... um, they tend to vote in, in certain ways on the whole that they, they aren't favorable to the people drawing these maps who tend to recently have been the Republicans. Now, the Democrats have certainly dipped their hands into the gerrymandering game, too, over the history of this country, so I don't want to make it seem like this is only a Republican tool. Uh, of course, the other thing is we have voter ID laws, uh, which are almost always done to limit the vote, voting of students, the elderly, and again, non-white uh, groups in America. Uh, and the third thing, and there's a journalist named Greg Palast, P-A-L-A-S-T, Greg Palast, who's been doing amazing work on this topic of cross-check, the, 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 the interstate cross-check system. Uh, and so he's the guy to go to for that work. Um, but to summarize it, essentially, <coughs> uh, Starting in 2013, this was a program that was created by the Kansas Secretary of State, uh, and they created a system that essentially has purged about 1.1 million Americans, mostly non-white Americans, from the voter rolls in states that are currently controlled by the Republicans. And the system is super shoddy. It, It basically, they go through their voting lists, and they find names that look similar that voted in multiple states. And, and, they're allow- and the system basically allows them on basically no evidence to drop the right of those people's vote to be counted. Um, you know, if too many people named Muhammad voted in your state, some of their votes might not count under this interstate cross-check system. 
uh, because they've just sort of arbitrarily decided that multiple people with a similar sounding name were actually the same person voting more than once. That's their justification is this imaginary voter fraud where, according to them, I guess millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people are just driving from state to state voting in more than one state. I, I personally find that a little hard to believe. Uh, and so if you go look at Greg's work, uh, he's been published by Rolling Stone. Actually, Abby Martin did a whole interview with him recently, who I also love her work, of course. Uh, he's, he's really laid out how um, this could have cost the Democrats the elections in certain states, certain key swing states. Um, so this cross-check is a real problem. Uh, and, and, you know, certainly I'm going to say a much bigger problem than the handful of people who decided to vote for third parties in the last election who seem to get blamed a lot more uh, by the Democrats for what happened than anything like gerrymandering or cross-check or any of these sorts of issues. Oh, yeah. Greg Palace is a, is a, is a regular guest on this show. And, and cross-check, uh, it, as, as Black Tower audience knows, is a huge part of the Palace film uh, Best Democracy Money Can Buy. You know... Um, the Black Tower audience is well versed on these, on these very strange and racist vote games that the powers that be play, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it needs to be highlighted and needs to be talked about more because Palast is the only guy talking about it, and now Kit, of course, because <laughs> you're Kit O'Connell and that's what you do. You're you're talking about these these issues that that need to be brought up, like like cross check. Um, you know, it's, it's why, why haven't they given why haven't they given Greg a, a Pulitzer for this? I guess we know that's just not how these things work, right? <laughs> it's ridiculous. He he talk he he talks about the mainstream media in the United States. He says, Jake, I have no idea how I ended up on your show on an AM terrestrial radio station <laughs> with with the Berlin Wall of information that's that's in the United States. And look. You know, it's funny, but it's true. You don't see Greg Palace anywhere. I mean, I've seen him a couple times on MSNBC, but he's not. it's not dwelled on, it's not talked about very often. I don't understand why. His story... This should be a huge scandal. This exactly. should be a massive scandal. I, it, it should be going viral everywhere, but it's amazing. It's amazing what what uh, what goes viral in this country, and it's mostly... Funny cat videos, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, on to the on to the second article you have here, and, and this is uh, this is a hundred percent true, and uh, it's it's been a a frequent topic of conversation on this show. Uh, the title of the article is "Democrat or Republican: War is Always Waged for Profit." And you know this is this is truth right right down to the bone here. It doesn't matter who's in office. You know the the war machine keeps on cranking, doesn't it, kid? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm I, as I'm sure people who have read my work, and as you know, I'm no fan of Donald Trump, but he, you know, made certain claims coming into office that he was going to sort of roll back our our investment in the global war machine. I didn't find that very likely, uh, both because he was Trump, but just because of this overall topic. You know, we've, we've seen it now president after president, regardless of, uh, you know, who, uh, who's in the office. Uh, Obama came into office and he was going to close Guantanamo and, and end our wars. And, and instead of ending our wars, one of his first decisions was to escalate our war in Afghanistan. We were going we to somehow, if we, if we sent a whole bunch more troops Somehow we were told that that was going to then let us have less troops later. But, of course, you know, here we are, you know, 15 years into the conflict in Afghanistan. We're dropping a record-breaking, the so-called mother of all bombs, which term I, I hate. Uh, yeah, but uh, here we are dropping this mega bomb on Afghanistan. And, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll predict right now, no matter how many of those mega bombs we drop on Afghanistan, it's not going to somehow stabilize that region, but it is going to make a lot of money for the people that make those mega bombs. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, the big strike on, on uh, you know, we all, 
unfortunately saw that horrifying footage out of Syria of people, you know, choking on, on a chemical weapons attack. Uh, you know, Trump told us it had moved his cold, dead heart, and he sent 59 <laughs> Tomahawk missiles into Syria in response to that. Um, but, you know, people in Syria are still dying, but, you know, that was... Uh, you know, me and my co-author, Eleanor Goldfield, on this piece from ACT OUT, we calculated that those 59 Tomahawk missiles, that that adds up to about somewhere between 59 and $82 million of an expenditure just on those missiles, and that's not on whatever the other support systems that go into carting and bringing those missiles over to the region to be fired over there. Uh, big payday. Raytheon stock was up on the day that uh, those missiles uh, uh, went off, and of course, uh, I, my understanding is that Trump, of course, is an investor in Raytheon. And and as you say in your piece, war profiteering, making bank off of death, is as American a pastime as baseball, and just as media friendly. That's a great. That's it, a great soundbite or a great bite <laughs> right there, in it, Kit. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I really like working with Eleanor on these act out pieces because uh, we both have a similar uh, take on the, on the world here. And yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of this goes back to uh, the first Gulf War. We had, you know, sort of the video game war that was fought during the initial uh, war, in, uh, uh, modern war in Iraq, uh, you know, where there was just, you know, every uh, TV station was falling over themselves to be the first to show these, you know, beautiful weapons in flight, you know, blowing up communities in, in Iraq, uh, you know, and this was going to somehow bring freedom to Iraq, uh, and of course now we have, you know, ISIS and, and the region is, is still, you know, deeply destabilized and even more than it was then. Um, and of course under Obama, I want to throw out there, you know, uh, the U.S. in his final year in office, and this, this quote uh, comes from the Council on Foreign Relations, who are not necessarily friends to activists or anything, but this is their... These are their totals. Uh, in Obama's final year in office, the U.S. dropped 26,172 bombs in seven different countries. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's the, the culmination of, you know, Obama, the hope and change, anti-war, you know, going to end the war in Afghanistan and Iraq president's final year. Uh, he dropped 3,000 more bombs than he did in 2015. And uh, I'm sure that Trump is going to keep on dropping lots of bombs and bigger bombs, and, uh, and and we're still going to have this mess we're in, no matter how many bombs we drop. Yeah, th this uh, this says the sixteen million dollar cost of this one explosion could have provided over f fifty million meals for for Afghan children, wrote Code Pink anti-war activist Medea Benjamin, and in an opinion piece published April fourteenth by Common Dreams, Kit, what do you? What do you think would, would uh, reach the hearts and minds of the Afghan people more? The 50 million meals or s the $16 million bomb that killed their grandmother? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, obviously the meals. <laughs> obviously the meals. <laughs> yeah. You know, this, you know uh, this is a bit of a digression, but, you know, let's look at, you know, uh, the former public enemy number one, of the USA, uh, Osama bin Laden, um, the reason that people, some people in that region considered him a hero and probably why he was able to hide in that region and live for so long, for many reasons, obviously, but one of them was that, you know, he was known as a road builder over there. He helped create infrastructure in some of the poorest parts of that world. Um, you know, obviously, he had some of that time he was a CIA asset when he was doing that. Um, but just, you know, I think it goes to show you that what sways hearts and minds over there, not that I'm crazy, you know, Osama bin Laden, obviously, but that, you know, what sways hearts and minds is things that actually improve people's lives. You know, if you build a road that lets a farmer bring his products to market, that helps his life immeasurably and improves his quality of living. If you blow up the road that he uses to bring his food to market, you've made an enemy. And if you, you know, if you blow up his family instead of feeding them, and not only have you made an enemy, you've probably created future terrorists. This is this is ridiculous, and I don't I don't think even even activists or or, 
or journalists covering this stuff know the full scope of what of what our military and our and our country has done in Barack Obama's final year in office the US dropped at least 26,172 bombs in seven countries an increase an increase of 3,028 bombs over 2015's total and you know the military industrial complex you know they want the you know the model of everlasting growth that all american companies seem to think they're they're entitled to so they you know 2017 we need at least 4000 more bombs kid <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i mean you know i don't see any indication that that trump is going to try to put the brakes on that i mean i, I think you know, he likes a, putting on a big show, right? He's a reality TV star. And what's a bigger show than dropping more and more and bigger bombs? Just, just, keep, just keep dropping more bombs, creating more terrorists, so we have to build more bombs to kill more terrorists that we keep creating. You know, it's, it's a great profit model if you, <laughs> you know, are an inhuman monster. <laughs> it's... it's uh, yeah, the, the, the profit cycle of death is, is what it is. Um, Kid O'Connell, go to kidoconnell.com, find all of his work, Adventures of a Gonzo Journalist. Thank you very much, Kid, for coming on the show. If you have any project you have coming up or, or anything you want to plug, you have the floor, sir. Uh, you know, yeah, just visit my website and, uh, you know, uh, I'm going I'm to give the three security tips that I tell people to do to be safer from surveillance real quick. Use Signal for messaging people. It's encrypted. Make sure you encrypt your phone, especially on Android. You have to do that so you can Google how do I encrypt my Android. And uh, make sure you lock your phone with a good password. Don't make it easier than you need to for them to spy on you. Those are the three tips that everybody should be following. So I guess I'll just toss that out there. Thank you very much, Kit, and uh, talk to you next month. See you then. That was KitOConnell.com. Well, no, that was Kit O'Connell from KitOConnell.com. And I, I'd like to, before we go, before we uh, go to break here, um, I'd like to give a shout out to J.D. Nero, an MC and an activist who's been supplying the music for Black Tower Radio during the break. Thank you very much, J.D. Nero. You can find him at J.D. Nero, N E R. O on Twitter. Thank you very much, sir. And we will be coming back with Turd Ferguson of tfmetalsreport.com for our economics and precious metals report. Stay tuned for that. We will be right back. You do not want to miss a segment with Turd. Brings great information, great interview, and it's good radio. So come back for some Turd Ferguson for our economics and precious metals metals report. We'll be right back. <laughs> 